Welcome everyone to the Jewish Study Center class about the metamorphosis of the kibbutz. My name is Jerry Garfinkel, and uh, I'll tell you that the classes are all free, and uh, Professor uh, Eliezer Ben Raphael, who's our speaker today, as well as our other teachers, are very knowledgeable, talented. Uh, but we do have various expenses, for example, paying for the Zoom services uh, today and uh, other, other expenses, maintaining our website, etc. So donations are very much appreciated. You can donate on our website under the heading Donate. You can contribute with a credit card, with PayPal, or by sending us a check. Just go to Donate and fill out the form. Uh, for a few technical um, uh, uh, technical uh, uh, points now. Um, everyone should be muted. Uh, Professor uh, Ben Raphael can unmute himself, but other people in the audience cannot until the very end. And we do want your comments and your questions. So write your comments and questions in the chat box. And then at the en end of uh, Professor Ben Raphael's presentation, our Vice President, Mindy Reiser, will take questions you have in the chat box, maybe reword them to some extent, and also um, add some of her own, of course, and will ask those questions to, to the professor. Um, and so um, I think that's all I wanted to say about my technical points. So now I'll introduce our Vice President, Mindy Reiser, and Mindy will make the introduction to today's class. Mindy, take it away. Yeah, hi everyone. Can you all hear me? Good, there I am. First of all, thanks for your patience. I, I have to tell you that Jerry just spends unbelievable amounts of time on this. And we, we try to get people from uh, many different parts of the US and the world, and it has its technical challenges. But here we are. Okay, I am so delighted to introduce a really distinguished academic, not only in Israel, but internationally. And that's Professor Eliezer Ben Raphael. He is Professor Emeritus of Sociology from Tel Aviv University. His areas of research are ethno-cultural cleavages in Israel, collective identities, sociology of linguistic landscape, and the sociology of the kibbutz. His many books include Multiple Globalizations, Linguistic Landscapes of World Cities, Leiden and Boston, Confronting Antisemitism in Europe, The Case of Belgian Jews. He is originally Belgian and perhaps he'll uh, allude to that. Sociology et Sociolinguistique des Francophonies Israéliennes, Jews and, edu and Jewish education in Germany today, ethnicity, religion, and class in Israel. Made, uh, okay, uh, that's in paperback. Jewish identities in an era of multiple modernities. He has also edited the Handbook of Israel, Major Debates, Reconsidering Israel Diaspora Relations, and the communal idea in the 21st century. He has received a number of distinguished awards for his work in sociology, among them the Landau Prize for Lifetime Achievement in Sociology. He has served as president of the International Institute of Sociology, president of the Israeli Sociological Association, and president founder of the Israeli Association for the Study of Language and Society. So you can see a knowledgeable expert on kibbutz, on Israel, on language, on identity. And now let's hear from Professor Ben Raphael directly. Again, please post your questions and comments to chat. And I can assure you, this will be an illuminating time together. Thank you very much. 
for your presentation. Just one thing I want to add to, to, to your description of my, of my journey, that uh, the, the journey start, my journey started with 20 years in the kibbutz, in kibbutz Hanita on the Lebanese border. And after I left the kibbutz for the academia, ever since I, I, I am very sensitive, I continue to be very sensitive to what happens to the kibbutz and how it develops and evolves. And I must say that this uh, interest has been uh, compensated by what, what I saw. I saw all the time the new things happening and until the last, the two last decades where Kibbutzim went through a genuine transformation, what I call a metamorphosis of the Kibbutz. And this is my, the, I will present here some reflections and some uh, analysis of the different and uh, new developments that have taken in the kibbutz or in the context, of course, of the history that was is and that uh, in, in, a very, very much interesting this well. So the, the, now the question that I want to know, to say, I want to, to start is that as well known, the kibbutz, a plural, Kibbutzim is a collective community based on agriculture, industry, and com 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 community services. This form of settlement was for many years moved by an idealistic ideology. Its history began during the second decade of the 20th century the Ganya, the first kibbutz in the Yarden, Jordan Valley, started with 11 people in 1910. And uh, in 1914, it already numbered 50 members. The number of kibbutzim quickly multiplied at this epoch around the Sea of Galilee and the Israel Valley. Today, there are about 250 kibbutzim with a population of about 160,000 people. Kibbutzim today account for nearly 10% of Israel's industrial output and 40% of its agricultural output. These kibbutzim always present not only as economic enterprises, but also and mainly as a kind of social entity of general societal significance. In brief, a utopia. The general assumption of utopia studies is that this kind of structure seeks to promote a better world. As a rule, though, researchers are less convinced than ideologists. Lacroix argues that such communities are primarily appealing to people on society's margins. Deschamps and Duchesne emphasize, however, the role of religiosity among members. Empirical studies show that religion inside communities are likely to show strong resilience to the vicissitudes of routine over years and generations. Secular communes tend to be single generational phenomena and for every year, the secular commune is doomed to abandon its utopian aspirations 
and transform into a standard agricultural settlement or a regular capitalist plantation. Only a group, according to him, driven by a transcendental vision can withstand the obstacles of survival as a commune. And indeed, the success of movements like the Hut Rights or the Bruderhof in several countries lies, according to studies, in the intensity of members' religious commitments. These assertions completely contradict the secular multi-generational kibbutz experience. A quite unique case that up to now is still with us. So this survival is marked by far-reaching adjustment that finally amount to a genuine metamorphosis. Amitai Etzioni has spoken in this respect of responsive communitarianism, grounded in a core of shared values. It is this model that Pitzer elaborates in a theory of developmental communalism and intentional community. These notions refer to groups attached to communal efforts in view of creating neighborhoods of a different kind. In brief, an international an intentional community consists of a voluntary social union whose members share an ideology, an economic union, and a lifestyle. Spitzer underlines as well that to retain his vitality, intentional community must learn to adjust to changing circumstances. Such an evolution is what Pitzer means by developmental communal, communalism. Sargent and Miller add that an intentional community also necessarily implies a message to society. For Meltzer, the question today is, are international intentional communities still relevant in the second decade of the 21st century? Individualism, individualism he says, now pervades every corner of the society, even communal settings, which cannot but leave a feeling of pessimism among people who care for a better sociality. According to Meltzer, industrialization, urbanization, economic markets have devastating consequences for society. Though he concedes that reactive processes are not unthinkable co-housing may renew the pertinence of the intentional community by responding to the reigning alienation. At the difference from the notion of utopia, the concept of and intentional community does not endorse a one forever social scheme. Intentional communities may evolve and change and be very different from each other. They consist of shaker communities, anarchic squatters, houses, or political-minded collectives. The common feature is members sharing a sense of togetherness, of societal significance. For McKinnon, the three essential features shared by communities of the sort are 
a collective income, community life, and commitment to growth. Pitzer's theoretical statement and McKinnon's reference to the Camp Hill movement carry a crucial interrogation regarding the contemporary kibbutz. The metamorphosis of the kibbutz represent an undeniable departure from the original commune. But does it still remain within the space of intentional communities? A complementary appropriate conceptual ground referring to the same questioning is offered by an ancient Jewish German sociologist, Tunis, and the dichotomy of Gemeinschaft and Gesellschaft. Gemeinschaft designates groups where social relations between individuals express feelings of solidarity and values. Gesellschaft designates groups where interactions, interactions are essentially instrumental and formal and imbued with hierarchy. These concept questions concepts uh, with the original reality that was close to the Gemeinschaft commune model and how close does it does one observe in the present day kibbutz a convergence toward the Gesell Gesellschaft association model. In the context of Pitzer and McKinnon's discussion of intentional communities, from a structuralist perspective, this taxonomy that focuses on the nature of social relations refines the consideration of kibbutz evolution. As a want to want to be utopia of the in kibbutz language or in the past, kibbutzim long aspired to social quality, making do with salaries and managing. Instead, collective, uh, uh, instead, collective mechanisms to regulate the distribution of goods and any other activity. One example of the importance of the collectivistic principle. Some kibbutz even convened special meetings of the assembly to decide about the naming of newborns. Different opinions might then oppose each other regarding how this creature was to be called for the rest of his or her life. Fathers and mothers participate, participated in these debates, just like other members. Hence, up to the 1980s, the communist principle of from each according to his ability, to each according to his needs, was the rule. And the kibbutz as such was seen as the very home of its members, restricting privacy to a minimum. Yet over the decades, many changes were adopted. The principle of which concerned the family. Under the influence and efforts, especially of female members, this institution gradually gained a space of presence. Becoming since the 1970s, a major sphere, if not the major sphere of individual's life. 
This did not prevent yet for a while from education to be collective <laughs> responsibility handled by nurses in, in charges of children's houses. The progress of familiarization, however, was finally strong enough to bring about in the early 1980s, the moving of children's night from the children's house to parents' home. In the meantime, over the years, kibbutzniks enjoyed a gradual improvement of the standard of living, an economic growth that was concomitant with the turn toward industrialization. Most members performed low-class occupations. As characteristic of most jobs in agriculture or industry, but they were in direct possession of the means of production. And, class, and that classified them as middle class people. Changes were creeping in, motivated by aspiration to allow gradually a wider space to individual. But at this epoch, still without breaking basic collectivistic codes. Much more virulent attacks against kibbutz ideology arose in the last quarter of the 80s. And kibbutz faced with the outbreak of a most acute economic crisis. The immediate background was the galloping inflation, which was shattering the economy in the form of disastrous national policies. Even worse, the authorities ill calculated just measures that gravely damage kibbutz life condition. No economic factor in the country escaped the impacts of the new measures. But for the kibbutz sector, things were priced as disastrous due, due to political since 1977, the to power of the right, after decades of interrupted list rule, every the creation of the state, things drastically change for 1977. It had always been protected of the kibbutz sector. And this attitude was now hardly the case with the new rust establishment. At an hour when help was the most, most kibbutzim were now overhand by an unprecedented burden of debts. Quarter of them were financial collapse. Numerous sons and daughters were now leaving in mass, refusing to tie the fuel to the drowning home. These concerns not leave the government different. Now, a left right coalition, and with the joint support of relevant ministries and banks, an agreement was elaborated to consolidate the communities, the community's economy. Excuse me.
governmental generosity, banks converting short and which warranted many kibbutzim survive. After the storm, the kibbutzim were, however, still left painful rethinking about the social order. How was it possible, many asked, that after generations of hard and harsh work, they find themselves again in rough poverty? Their own systems holy cows and put all means to turning now a new page in the conduct of this affair. One of the first tendencies was the privatization of housing, that is the abolition of collectivism. Principle. Each member became the direct owner of his house. This was only the first step of a list. To sign but a few of them. Another change of heavy consequence was establishing individual different salaries for members, which means abandon of the communist principle itself. Individual income became dependent and span of responsibility. Next, kibbutzim allow unlimitedly site employment to interested members in compensation and restriction employment of external workers in the kibbutz was suppressed. From directors of trees to nurses of children. Members could now also retain any kind of private resource that they receive from externals. What is more, kibbutzim started building community expansions, that is, residential neighborhoods within the top families, attracted by a rural environment at cost, but with not necessarily any intention to become members of the kibbutz. Actually, Kibbutzim's far reaching changes, particularly the question of what nucleus of principles does still characterize a kibbutz as a kibbutz. To this question, the Ben Public Committee was appointed to provide certified answers and also to propose appropriate rearrangements in organization. This committee announced two exigencies for a kibbutz to deserve keeping its definition as its title. The first, the principle of mutual responsibility, according to which the kibbutz were that all members enjoy common basic rights in essential life, uh, in essential areas, work, housing, health, education, and a minimum income. The second principle consists of the obligation collectives reach any decision that might a major feature 
community structure with the approval of at least two thirds majority. This is criterion. Each decision must reflect degree of consensus. Moreover, kibbutzim, about one fourth of the kibbutz sector, would seem that a lot less than others to make important changes. Approved by the committee kibbutzim shituf pi'in, that is based on sharing. While kibbutzim, which adopted any changes, three quarters of the of the movement, when kibbutzim mitchatshin, that is renewing kibbutzim principles, by the committee by both category of kibbutzim, thereby continue to dwell under the same organizational roof. This differentiation did not and was not to entail a, 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 a break into the movement, the kibbutz. On the contrary, all the major movements of kibbutzim unified and became what is now called the unified kibbutz movement. Despite the greater liberal and endorsement on individualistic tendencies, the renewed kibbutzim are up to now by no means ignorant of internal conflict. That must be said. To some extent, the situation at this respect is even more acute than in the kibbutzim shitufi'in. In the later, in this category, in the shit, among the shitufi'in, the, the, that is like in the, at the classic phase of the movement, these courts are not raw. They develop on grounds like the differentiation of social positions, rivalries between rivalries, family networks, educational gaps or comp competition imposing leading figures. Though far reaching changes in the mitrachim appear to increase the range of claims that may become sources of tensions. Among others, between the newcomers and old timers, individual claims against the community bodies and the stratification interest engendered by differential salaries. All this create a, a, a multiplication of uh, foci of conflict. It remains that despite such tensions, the subsequent weakening of social cohesion and growing individualization, the metamorphosis of the kibbutzim as up to now, being short from stepping out the space of kibbutz as outlined by the two principles of collective responsibility and the collective decision-making. One reason probably lies in the successful results obtained by the structural changes in the realm of work productivity, absorption of outsiders, and most important, satisfaction with kibbutz life. These successes are undoubtedly causes of members' feelings that they form a solidaristic entity, united by a more or less concentric perspective on the singularity 
of the community. As such, these members also feel that they may represent concretizations of the model of intentional community. These feelings are bound to be, to be sure, to the fact that for the last decade, one also observes that the far reaching changes that three quarters of the kibbutzim have endorsed up to now have led them to a new relative stability. Nowadays, it is true, kibbutzim can hardly be described as communes. But one cannot gain say either that renewed kibbutzim still belong to the category of inten intentional communities as far as they keep up to those features that assert continuity vis-a-vis -vis original ambitions or at least some original ambitions. A, real, a reality that displays, however, an amount of interrogation marks that makes Kibbutzim illustrate what Ulrich Beck means in general terms by the notion of risk society. From the present day renewed Kibbutz to the space of non kibbutz the way has indeed drastically shrink. The large majority of kibbutzim are not Gemeinschaft communes anymore, but they still are somehow different from the environment and belong to the space of intentional communities. While the interactions taking place today among kibbutzniks are often instrumental and regulated by formal rules and hierarchical differentiation a la Gesellschaft, still the importance of one mod model at given respect does not ipso facto completely exclude the relevance of the other at other respects. There are many past patterns. The work organization called teams responsible for individual branches and experiencing intense togetherness as well as itself of work as a goal on its own right, are not involved anymore. Another novelty, not yet mentioned, the boom of private entrepreneurship among the, mem the members, adding to the disparity of income among them, is the opening of small businesses within the keyboard space at the service of outside clients, addresses, technicians, tailors, etc. All these contribute to a slackening of social relation, the loosening of social control, and to a more relaxed social climate, climate than in the past. Because there is less control, people feel better. This new climate does not, however, eradicate the causes themselves of frictions produced by the recent transformations. The community tax, for instance, may be a factor of discord as the people who gain the largest income and thus, and thus pay the largest part of this tax may complain and often do that they carry the welfare of the population on their shoulders. 
another hub of opposed interests. The different statuses among people which fuel the bargaining over the obligations and privileges attached to the specific status categories. We mean here first regular members, the Vatican, those who created the, the kibbutz, who maintained the kibbutz, who were the, are the, the essential of the population of the kibbutz from the viewpoint of the working power. Second, partial members. Today, people may become members of the kibbutz partially by paying reduced taxes and enjoying reduced services. Third, newcomers who have bought houses in the community extension just to be residents. Fourth, people who rent an apartment and enjoy only very few special privileges. Between these categories, queries may arise regarding the extent of the obligations as well as the privileges. One example, a frequent request of newcomers is the lowering of the payment for using the kibbutz swimming pool. Old timers would react brilliantly to requests of this kind. These people arrived just now, already behave as owners of the kibbutz. Some feel even attacked and accused. These people, they say, want to steal the kibbutz from us. Among the newcomers, it is true, one finds many people who had been educated in the kibbutz had left before the far-reaching changes and are now willing to return in improved conditions. Many others have no a priori adherence to kibbutz culture. Then the encounter with veteran old-timer kibbutzniks may provide unexpected occurrences. One example, a group of newcomers in a past very Marxist, strongly Marxist kibbutz asked for the building of a synagogue for Shabbat and holiday prayers for those interested. This was objected right away by kibbutzniks for ideological reason, for historical reason, tradition of the kibbutz as a leftist uh, settlement. The quarrel got poisoned and found no other way to solution than raising the issue to court. Here, of course, the judge found himself unable to object to the demand. How could the community in Israel object to a request to build a synagogue. Volens Nolens, all timers, had to bow to the judge verdict. Many such foci of tensions come up even today, but as a rule, do not cause raptures or abstract the growth of the kibbutz population which increases by thousands every year. They just adapt to all distinctions, contributing in this manner to a complex imbroglio of conflicts. The basic fact remains that surveys show that kibbutzniks enjoy now a higher level of satisfaction from the life in the kibbutz. The kibbutz has become tantamount to good life. 
at the hour that it has become less of a kibbutz. Which brings up the question of kibbutz self-legitimacy. Many signs show that there is a strong decline of loyalty to kibbutz ideology in whatever terms it is faced. Leaders of the kibbutz are now no longer speaking about the concretization in the kibbutz of equality and sharing, but rather of cooperation, a concept that is gaining preeminence in the way the kibbutz presents itself these days on any public stage. The drive to represent for itself and for society at large, social and societal values was always viewed by kibbutzniks as intended in their self-assigned role in the public sphere. Today, in contrast, the kibbutz finds it dif difficult to present itself in that light. It's much more flagrant in the public eye is that they care primarily for their own well-being and act in publicly as a normal interest group. Though it's also true that the kibbutz code for public role in society, which was a major credo of the historical era has not yet completely vanished. Efforts are being invested to express a unique contribution of the kibbutz to society. One thinks here of the enrollment of many sons and daughters in elite units in the army. Involvement in education project in impoverished urban neighborhoods or inviting new immigrants for the first steps in the country. These efforts, however, are not necessarily re rewarded by general recognition. The individualization of kibbutz life has also imprinted itself in the community's culture at the detriment of the kibbutz long-standing determination to illustrate a new kind of secular Jewish culture. Even now, culture activities are by no means negligible and many of them are, like in the past, articulated in the frame of original kibbutz rites of Jewish holidays, weddings, or bar mitzvah. Yet the arrival in large numbers of newcomers, of, in, of newcomers that carry now no a priori familiarity with past kibbutz culture has often brought with it exigencies to compromise with more positive approaches to traditional patterns. The dialectics between Gemeinschaft Commune and Gesellschaft Association is also visible in the domain of language. In a general manner, the Hebrew of kibbutzniks has always conveyed numerous markers of singularity. Examples. A kibbutznik would address someone on a familiar tone by using the word chaver, friend in Hebrew. He or she would call a day off, a day that of no work, a Shabbat, due to the kibbutz norm of naming this way any non-working day. On the other hand, the trend of individualization of the social life and concomitant, and concomitant, concomitant, concomitant relative decollectivization has entailed over the years the successive adopt, 
the adoption of different linguistic registers used to organize the community's public agenda. To give a few examples, for decades, kibbutzniks language was strongly marked by ideology. Popular token already mentioned was the word vanguard. The kibbutz is vanguard. The weakening of militant spirit caused this language to leave room to psychological language that insisted on the problematics of social relationships social dynamics. This language showed that kibbutzik start expressing the difficulties to retain all truths in the literal sense. In turn, it drew back at the benefit of an administrative language when the formalization of procedures gained in importance. One now spoke of director of the kibbutz, for instance, instead of the secretary. Today, the legal language, the legal language plays a predominant role as kibbutz members are now more preoccupied with the individual rights and duties. A phrase frequently heard is now what I ask for and deserve, Magiali in Hebrew. At the same time, however, other aspects reflect the reticence of kibbutzniks to abandon all symbols of the historical kibbutz. Hence, for instance, many kibbutzim still avoid endorsing a comprehensive linguistic landscape that is naming streets, pathways, numbering houses. Despite the recognition of its urge by the many in an era when neighborhoods, roads, pathways have multiplied due to demographic increase. One example, when a visitor arrives in a kibbutz to see someone, is to make do with indications such as start from the big tree on the parking lot, go right up to the fifth house, then take a left and just in front of you, you will find a red cabin, then take a left again, etc., etc. One more example. Many a member complains that today one encounters great difficulties to receive maids and ordered packages from the outside. Post office clerk who directs from the regional agency the mail to inhabitants of the kibbutz often complain by telephone about the absence of personal precise addresses on mail items and are mentioning only the kibbutz name as destination. The attempts of kibbutzniks to explain to the clerk that in the kibbutz are no personal address cause numberless people calls up to the point that members feel obliged to invent addresses like Stalin Street, number 1990, or Charlie Chaplin Boulevard, number one. In this context, in one kibbutz, a female member started a public campaign in favor of adopting a comprehensive linguistic landscape. She took a tractor to the place, distributing flyers and a written plan with names and pathways and roads, but all this in vain. Most members of this kibbutz, like of other ones, still 
stand against to this day only about 15 kibbutzim have adopted a linguistic landscape, naming pathways and numbering members' houses. For the majority, it's seemingly still difficult to accept that everyone in the kibbutz would have his, uh, his or her own unique identifier. And that the name of the kibbutz itself is not sufficient anymore. This expresses the gap between daily life hard facts and the self participation of kibbutzniks regarding the essence of the community. In other words, between the de facto Gesellschaft Association, which the kibbutz concretizes in practical terms at major respects, and the Gemeinschaft commune that still represent what the kibbutz is meant to signify. All in all, it is probably close to the truth to describe the kibbutz of today as hybrid, a hybrid community, where Gesellschaft and Gemeinschaft coexist and compete side by side with each other. Gesellschaft predominates in the major instrumental domains like the work setting, propriety rights, distributive norms. Gemeinschaft is still there in the areas of collective symbols, cultural activities, or the absence of comprehensive linguistic landscape in populated areas. What is also observable in that kibbutz reality has reached a quite durable configuration where original ambitions to represent the challenge for society are hardly discernible. While kibbutzniks have gained probably greater peace of mind, society in general, Israeli society, has lost the legendary activism of a social segment that has long been highly reactive to whatever happened all around. Yet kibbutzim still illustrate the notion of intentional community, even when they drop from the vocabulary the idea of vanguard. Above all, they are even now an interesting facet of the society. But it is to add only one among others. Viewed from a theoretical point of view, the interesting phenomenon that comes up in this analysis and which is relevant to utopia studies in general, is the illustration of how a model a la renewing kibbutz approaches normalcy, that is the non-kibbutz, by bringing about an original oxymoron, which we would phrase individualistic community. Thank you. Uh, Mindy, you're 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 muted. All right, thank you so much, uh, Professor Ben Raphael. There was so much that you shared with us, and we have a number of questions. Um, let me start with with education. I too spent a little time on a kibbutz, kibbutz Ramat Hashofet. And you spent uh, at least 20 years, and perhaps if we have any time, we can hear more about that. 
but the educational component is a vital dimension of kibbutz life. Um, the inculcation of young people with kibbutz values, the ideology of sharing equality, communal responsibility. And you talked about the, the two major divisions of the renewing kibbutzim, the kibbutzim mitchatshim, and the kibbutzim shitufim. So I imagine there are differences there, but can you make any generalizations about what has happened to education of young people on the kibbutz? I'm assuming they're still on the kibbutz for what we would call pre-kindergarten or kindergarten through middle school, through high school. Uh, yes, I can see. You hear me? Yes. It's okay? Yes. yes. I can say just this uh, here, that in all kibbutzim, there is no more night of the child in the children's house. It, uh, uh, all kibbutzim have moved their children to the parents' home. Right. And, and that means that education is essentially privatized. Uh, I would say that in the kibbutzim shitufim, you may you may have a stronger structure still at work in uh, after the studies, after the regular uh, day activities. But I would not emphasize this point. In my, I, I have the, uh, I think that everywhere, the children in kibbutzim everywhere nowadays have the same ambitions regarding possibilities of higher studies, uh, going on study outside the kibbutz at the level after the gymnasium, etc. Uh, yet, I, I will not be, go too far in this way, on this pathway. I would say that even in the kibbutzim that are mitrakshim, you have also uh, an intention at least to, trans, to, 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 to transfer uh, values that are somehow singular to the kind of settlement, to the, move, the notion of kibbutz. There is still a notion of kibbutz in the education, even in the, in the frameworks of the kibbutz in Mitrachim. To this, just adopt another thing I would like to say, many, many kibbutzim do not hold anymore uh, schools of their own. Huh? But they, they have their children learning in regional schools yeah. where you find kibbutzim just, uh, uh, children of uh, kibbutzim itrachim and also kibbutzim shitufiim and also people that are not kibbutzniks but are interested to have the children trained in this kind of school. So let's say you have something remaining that do not necessarily differentiate sharply between kibbutzim shitufim and kibbutzim mitrachim. Again, um, we don't have too much time, but let me clarify this. Are there bodies that develop curricula specifically for the individual kibbutz or for the kibbutz mitrachim or the kibbutz uh, shitufi. Uh, is there any collective organization or is it all very much individual? No, you, you have some, some activities that are oriented by uh, collect, collective values, even in kibbutz mitrachim. But this is, this is not I wouldn't say that this is the main aspect of education today in kibbutz education. Kibbutz education nowadays is very, very, tend very 
to be more or less like education elsewhere. Okay. Um, one person would like to clarify for those who may not be familiar the distinction between Gemeinschaft and Gesellschaft. That was oh. an important distinction. You talked about the hybridization. Uh, per perhaps you could uh, explain that in a little bit uh, different language. <laughs> I can explain it in Hebrew uh, more, more easily, but I would say Gemeinschaft is the group where people are the same. Try to, to, conf to conform to the same patterns where differences are secondary between people. The main thing is that they share something together, the same thing. Uh, uh, Gesellschaft is uh, the group which where the, the takes for granted that everyone is different and they have some kind of contract relations between them. You give me this, I give you that. Everyone has his own, uh, uh, its own roles, its own properties, its own uh, ambitions. But still, for instrumental reasons, they work together, and they 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 try to organize in a way that each one has its own contribution. Okay, we have a question from Ayala Jonas uh, from Brooklyn, my hometown. Um, very interested in the correlation between economic success and wealth and becoming either Shitufi or um, Mithadshim. Uh, what role has economic uh, success had in adhering to collective values or becoming more individualistic? That's a very important question. In fact, in fact, when you had kibbutzim that did not want to change drastically the patterns of life. These kibbutzim, for a large part of them, were kibbutzim that were successful without change. You have a kibbutz not far from uh, Eilat, that is on airport as is, is, has a, a, a industry that is famous in Israel that is one, a large part of, of dairy products in, 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 in the supermarket. That, that means you have kibbutzim that are really affluent. And among these kibbutzim, the, there was no feel, uh, feeling that they have to change something, that they have to make transformations. They, they, that means the kibbutzim that were more socialistic, let's say, were in fact more capitalistic, <laughs> to, to, to use this expression. It means they, they, as a collective, they were very, very affluent. Hmm. The, the kibbutzim that were the most eager to change, to transform, were kibbutzim that oh, 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 they are bankrupting. They are on at the edge of bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. And that was the case of many kibbutzim when the, of the big, the big uh, crisis of the end of the eighties. Then to there, the people ask, what is, what is the point that we did this work and we, we suffered this suffering and now we come up after two, three generations to the point of uh, the beginning. And they try to change the system. But now that the, they have changed the system they, and they, they, they take profit of the change because basically the changes have been very 
have produced very positive results from the view, economic point of view, from the point of view of the restfulness of the, 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 the social life and the kibbutz and, and the level of living, etc. So they don't want to go back. They want to take to, 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 to take profit of what, what they achieved. And nowadays they are they are a, a pole of attraction for people outside. Many youngsters, young couples in Israel contemplate the possibility to go and live in the kibbutz, buy a house in a kibbutz. Well, yeah, yeah. It? Sorry to interrupt you. Um, so the point being that even though the kibbutz um, has moved um, to more, uh, well, individualistic uh, yeah. approaches and more capitalistic, still there's some attraction that it, it has. There's some uh, power that it has. Would that be in some minimal social protection, some minimal communal yes, yeah, yes yes even in those kibbutzim that are uh, the the as i said one of the basic things is mutual responsibility for housing providing uh, the kibbutz has to provide health care to provide housing to provide uh, uh, a work work position etc but you have I mean, to the minimum, the minimum is, is provided by the by the collective. Uh -huh. but, but in some cases you buy your own house, you said. Yes, of course. But but the, but but uh, even if they have no money to buy a house, the kibbutz will will find a solution for them in one way or, the, or another. Okay. All right. Somebody they, the house will not be theirs. The house will be the kibbutz. All right, if you, if you, people that have not the money, to right? Buy, but this does not apply to the kibbutzniks. Kibbutzniks got a house from the pool of houses, they were distributed to kibbutzniks mm -hmm. as, as private, as private property. Okay. Now, if a, a member, children, etc., finds himself without without a, a lodging that belongs to him the kibbutz will take care of it but the lodgings will not be the the individuals but the, the kibbutz as such somebody asks about kibbutz brenner where they uh, worked many years ago do you know how it has been faring excuse me what do you mean kibbutz brenner Kibbutz Brenner? Yeah. A kibbutz, uh, well, there are many kibbutzim, so uh, uh, we we may not have. Yeah, I'm sorry, Givat Brenner. Givat Brenner. Givat Brenner, yes. Givat Brenner, yeah. Do you know anything about it? <laughs> uh, uh, I, I think that Givat Brenner, Givat Brenner is one of the big kibbutzim in Israel. The, among the, the the four or five biggest kibbutzim of the country. It has about uh, uh, 700 or 800 members and so on. And I think that the Givat Brenner, I'm not sure that it belongs to the kibbutzim Shitufi'im. It still belongs to the kibbutzim Shitufi'im. No, I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's all right. Somebody else asked about uh, a book uh, called Kibbutz Makom. Do you yes, 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 yes. So what should I say about it? Well, if you want to describe what it is. <laughs> it's a, as far as I remember, it's like already a long time that I read it. Uh, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's about the fight of cliques of people in the kibbutz. 
the, the, it is a, a book written in a critical spirit, as far as I remember. Okay. Um, you talked about uh, the increase in membership, or at least in, in uh, affiliating with the kibbutz. What about the uh, Jews uh, who came from Ethiopia, Jews from the former Soviet Union? Did they try to become part of a kibbutz? Uh, as uh, the, the kibbutzim might made efforts to provide uh, immigrants a, a house, a home for a, for 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 a given while, for 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 a year or two years until they are able to integrate society. If they want to become members today because of all the transformation of the kibbutz to become a member uh, request an investment it's not like in the uh, 20 years ago or 30 years ago that you came with your your work power your individual uh, capacity and you asked to become a member of the kibbutz and and you were there was a whole process to which to go through in order to to be appreciated by the other members and to be accepted into membership nowadays it's already different to become a member of a kibbutz request to become a member, to a resident or whatever, be, request an investment. The investment can be in one shot or can be divided into, you know, a, a, a process of one or two years of, of payments. Yes, it's a somewhat different world. Someone asks about... Oh, right, right. It's different, of course. Oh, for sure. What about the Moshavim? How do they figure in this landscape? In what? Moshavim. Yes. Uh, yeah, the, the Israeli social experiments with Kibbutzim and Moshavim. What are the Moshavim in 2021? Okay. Uh, they are very different things. You have Moshavim that nowadays uh, the people that have a house in the Moshav and the ground, a piece of ground, they uh, possibly work outside the Moshav and, 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 and employ salaried workers to work on the ground, to do agricultural work. Others, uh, some Moshavim are still the classic hill of Moshav with the family, the ground, and the Moshav, that's the, 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 the settlement as such that has some kinds of uh, responsibility, etc. But let's say that the Moshavim are very close today. Many Moshavim are close to the, to the model of a regular village, agricultural village. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in terms of where things are going, are you seeing some young people who want to establish Kibbutzim in the traditional model? Of, yes. I don't... Yes, okay. you have that. In some Kibbutzim, even... In First, you have the kibbutzim shitufi'im. Right. That are closer to the traditional model of kibbutz. They, 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 they make changes as well, but more moderate than the, the mitrachim. The, you have in, in this kibbutzim, and also in kibbutzim mitrachim, you have people who want to live a life like the traditional kibbutzniks. 
they can form and they form a small, a small collective within the kibbutz. That is the kibbutz in the kibbutz, if you want. Ah. And they, they do it. Youngsters and not that youngsters. People who want this, they don't want to change. So they, they make some kind of group where, that, where things continue to, to work as it was. And you have this kibbutz in there with this kind of kibbutz within the kibbutz. Okay, so you talked about hybridization. Is that what you see the future of the kibbutz as a collective experiment? How do you see it in 20 or 30 years? Look, Buber said, Martin Buber said a long time ago, long, long time ago in the 40s, the kibbutz is an experiment that did not fail. Huh. He did not say that it that, that succeeded. It did not fail. This ambiguity continues all the way along, up to now. Now, regarding what will be in 20 years, you know the Pasuk of the of the Talmud. Who has now the gift of prophecy? <laughs> I don't want to be in this category. Okay, Tov. Well, Tov. All right. Um, I know we've said this would go to 2.30, but we started a little late. And I want to at least ask the questions that are on the chat. Barbara asks, uh, you talked about houses. What about the land? The land belongs to the kibbutz, doesn't it? To the, no, the land belongs to the state. Ah. This is state land. Besides the, the area of, where, of dwellings where people live, the, 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 besides the area of houses, there is a parcel that belongs individually to people that it's a part of the house but the land in general of the kibbutz is statement in this time it was the national fund now it's it's statement that is the name say again and and israel is karka the land. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. Okay. The land. Uh, all right. What about the religious kibbutz, Sim? How are they faring? Are people being attracted to them? And I guess there are various degrees of religious observance in the religious kibbutz, Sim. Look, there are 17, somehow, I think 17 kibbutzim that are religious kibbutzim. 17. Uh -huh. You have three kibbutzim or two, uh, maybe the only two now, that are Agudat Israel, Pole Agudat Israel. Okay, that is a, a story of its own. <laughs> but the, the, the kibbutzim, the kibbutzim, the, the religious kibbutzim are interesting because they started not as the other kibbutzim, they started with much more individual practices than the, the rest of the kibbutzim. They, 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 the family, the importance of the family from the beginning was clear and, and insisted upon. And therefore, to, and, and education, the family was the, 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 the main educational factor from the beginning not like the other kibbutzim where as i said the the the, the kibbutz was the in, in in charge of the education it was said to be in charge of education in fact family fathers and mothers had more influence than that than that but the officially it was the nurse if a child was ill, 
is the nurse from the children house that took him to the doctor, not the mother. So the, that is in the non-religious kibbutzim. At the beginning, for the 20, 30 first years about, in religious kibbutzim, the family was number one in education. So what has happened is, and also as a result, there, there, are, there, are, there were arrangements in the kibbutzim, in the religious kibbutzim that give importance to the family, to the individual and so on. But with the changes in the other kibbutzim, that means the kibbutzim, the religious kibbutzim were more liberal than the kibbutz movement as a whole. And when the kibbutz movement started changing, they changed more and more. And the kibbutz, the religious kibbutz nowadays looks like something from the past. That means they, 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 they are more kibbutz, if you want, than the non religious <laughs> kibbutz. Okay, let me ask one last question because you've talked for a while. Yes, and you, then, what? you understood what I mean. Okay. Okay, um, in terms of technology, and Israel is very well known for its innovative work in high tech, it's sought after by countries all over the world. How has that impacted the kibbutz world in terms of the industrialization, in terms of the factories, in terms of agriculture? Are young people going to university, studying information technology, coming back to the kibbutz? applying these practices where is this going look i i don't have any statistics at hand but what i what my feeling as far as i know about this topic is that kibbutzim for a long time did not compete with the non-kibbutz industry mm -hmm. regarding high tech Mm -hmm. they, they had the, the it was the, the main kibbutz factories were on more more classic type of industry but since about 15 years something like 15 years strong efforts to develop a high-tech industry in the kibbutzim. The problem is what you say just now. When people go and start studying and get uh, the training, mm -hmm. a good training in this area, nowadays in Israel, it is very, very, very easy to get a job, a good job and well paid. It's like it uh, somehow, like the sons of the kibbutz who went to the army in elite units, became officers, made a career. And then the question was for them to go back to the kibbutz or to remain in the army, continue the career. And the same with the, but kibbutzim try to have enough capital also by, there are a lot of industries in, this, uh, in the kibbutzim that are uh, joint ventures ah. with outsiders. Uh -huh. And they, in order to, to employ the own people that have gone for study or to, to employ outsiders to come and work on the kibbutz industry. You understand what I mean? That means nowadays there is no problem for kibbutzim to take salaried workers at, at all levels. I don't know exactly, oh, look, uh, an important thing here, 
I will say that is that may may astonish you. Many kibbutz kibbutzim that have good factories, and there are some that are real, really leading in the factories in their fields, such as. Dogma Mamterot, the factory of Mamterot, of uh, uh, watering, watering fields. Uh -huh. and, Irrigation. Or, or, or water agriculture. Uh -huh. Agriculture water. Okay. Uh, in in Gedi, or, or uh, uh, tools, industrial tools. <laughs> they, they are they are very very profitable trees in Israel, and the the the, the kibbutzim try to get uh, associates to to invest money with them in the in the affairs, or it is it is not rare that. Uh, People with money outside the kibbutz come and and want to buy the, the industry of the kibbutz, huh. and many kibbutz and not many. I don't know exactly the numbers, but kibbutzim number of kibbutzim sell out the industry, and they receive a lot of money. Hmm. And so, for the kibbutzim, that's uh, wonderful. You know, they, 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 they divide the money, part of the money, part go to the settlement as such, and part go to private accounts of people. Hmm. And so this is, this is, a, this is an interrogation mark, what will happen to this kibbutzim. It, 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 it's not yet like in Florida, that you have people with, in some, they call it a kibbutz. I was once there, the, uh, a village of retired people with a lot of money. But you have the feeling it's it's not a, a settlement with workers. People work, or a, a part of the people do not work anymore. Hmm. So this is, this is you see. You asked me about 20 years ago, from now? Mm -hmm. This is a question mark. Oh my goodness. Very well, difficult. Yeah. Very you difficult said, you said there was something that would astonish us. Is there any, any other dimension you haven't mentioned that would astonish us? <laughs> I, I, look. The kibbutz is still something that is changing all the time, and uh, and not in a dictatorial manner. You have the strong people of the settlements, but you have democracy, and all the time there are. Uh, I I spoke about fic fictions about conflicts. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's impossible. I don't. I my. I am optimistic. I. 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 I think no. There was a important Greek in antiquity, a Greek philosopher, that said, "Movement is uh, is absurd. There's no movement because when you go from point A to point B." You first go to point C in the middle. And from C to B, you go still first to a point in the middle D. And from D to, to, to B, you have also a point in the middle. All the time you are you have another middle. Mm -hmm. So you never get to B. That was his point, the paradox. The same thing with the kibbutz, I think. Not the same thing, but it's something that gives some thought about the, the kibbutz. They do changes, 
in the direction of the non-kibbutz. But at the same time, they still have aspects that refer to the past, to past ambitions, to past symbols. When you go on a, on a road in Israel, you drive on the road in Israel, you see a panels, you see kibbutz, this and this, and you see it at a, a, a picture. What is the picture? The picture is a tractor, is a, a agricultural a, a, a field, an agricultural field, a, 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 someone with a kova temple. This is not. This does not exist anymore. But the kibbutz feel that the, this is a, a symbol mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of what it of its singularity that it was once like that. So what I say is that uh, the kibbutzim go and change, but at the same time try to drag with them uh, something that reminds the past. I understand. Now, more than 200 kibbutzim with these uh, uh, definitions that you've given us, is there any collective gathering where they get together, all 200 plus of them? Sure. There are, there are not as frequently as in the past, but they, there are general assemblies three, four times a year, uh -huh. possibly more. And there are vo votes, people vote. By, by telephone, by computer, they vote for important decisions. Oh, no, I don't mean individual kibbutz at all. I mean the whole collectivity of the 220. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, of yes. course. Then. Sure, there is a kibbutz movement. And with it's... the structure, with the leadership. Okay. With the, uh, you have everything. The, uh, and they speak like, uh, they, they speak nowadays, they speak about cooperation. Okay. The kibbutz is an example of cooperative movement. They don't speak anymore of the kibbutz as a collectivistic movement, but as a cooperative movement. Are the okay? Uh, are the um, meetings uh, uh, documented in in Hebrew at least? Could somebody read these deliberations? Of course, there's no problem. They 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 have. All the, the they have two three times a year big meetings with mm -hmm. uh, conferences with the uh, with the uh, uh, documents that are published. Sure, they have okay. a journal, the journals, uh, two or three journals going on regularly. Uh, of course, they're in Hebrew. Um, yes, so. <laughs> Hebrew, but. Uh, <laughs> what can I do? Well, of course, they should be in Hebrew. What are they called, the journals? Oh, I don't remember. All now. right. Oh, it's all right. People can I'm find so, them. Sorry, really. No, no, no. no. Uh, uh, there's Dafayarok. The, the green, green, the green paper? The green page. The, ah, green page. Okay, that's better. Uh, Dafayarok. Okay. For, and, another one is Igeret. Uh, again, the journal. Ah. Letter to the member. Okay, all right. If anybody wants to follow up, that's great. All right, let me remind you that we have been able to get a 50% discount on the publication, The Metamorphosis of the Kibbutz. This is the hardcover version. And it is an edited volume with extraordinary essays on everything from economy and employment to community, to ideology, to culture and language. This book is now in paperback. You can get 50% off the paperback and we have a coupon and this is all on our website. Um, there is so much richness here. The professor has only touched on it. I really recommend this for anybody who wants to understand the kibbutz. Um, Jerry, do you want to say anything? Well, I wanted to thank uh, Professor uh, Ben Raphael for a uh, great talk. I 
I wish we had begun a little earlier, but it was a very wonderful talk. And there are a lot of people who have on the uh, chat uh, had very interesting questions and and uh, have appreciated uh, the the information that you're presenting. Of course, there'll be even more information on the paperback version that uh, Mindy has arranged for us to get a discount. Here it uh, is. The the details about that. Or we'll, we'll be both on our um, we'll be on our, our website, and I'll mention it in the email. This session has been recorded. I stopped recording once because I was trying to do something, but it, it went right, right back on. Right, right. So um, I'll edit the recording, and it will be posted. I will send an email to everyone who registered for the class, and then you can find out more information that way. Uh, I was interested in a lot of things that you said. I had not heard Zeno's paradox mentioned recently. As a mathematician, <laughs> we've often talked about that. Go so halfway, halfway, halfway. Do you ever get there? Answer is yes, but that's okay. <laughs> um, and I, I would also uh, like to ask uh, everyone who is still on or who will be watching the recording, if you have any topic that you would like to teach or that you would like to have someone else teach, especially if you know someone who might teach it, please contact us. Uh, our motto is come learn with us. We'd like to have people teach and learn with us. That, that's the whole point of this thing. So again, uh, thank you, Professor uh, Ben Raphael. Thank you for uh, thank you, Mindy, for managing all these questions and stuff and picking up many of your own. I'm getting in my own. <laughs> I, I understand that. You always do that. You always think in your own questions. And and I, uh, again, I apologize to people for, uh, I have to get up, I have a little problem here. Um, I, I apologize to people we, for our late start, um, but, you know, things happen that, I'm sorry, we don't <laughs> remember this. We we'll try this. to do, we'll, we'll try to have lessons learned. So whatever problems we had this time, we'll have a different problem next time. That's and remember, we'll this right. is live from Israel. This is not recorded. Well, and, it is recorded, actually. Well, it is so not recorded. It recorded. Now. Yeah. This is, Most this people will sit on a recording. So <laughs> it is recorded. But anyway, we're finished now. Well, thank you very much, everyone. And please send us your, your uh, topics for, for uh, future classes. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Wait, th th Happy New Year. Does professor, wait a second. Does Professor Raphael want to say anything else? It, it looked like he might. Thank you very much for this opportunity to meet you and to, to discuss a matter that has always been very, very dear to me. Thank you. We I are very grateful. grateful. Well, the kibbutz has been very people, dear to, uh, to uh, many of us. All the people around the world that are also interested in this special, very special case that is called the kibbutz. Thank you. Lehitraot, <laughs> lehitraot. Shalom, shalom. Okay, with shalom. you. Happy New Year, everyone. And we'll see you in January <laughs> with new classes. Okay, okay, bye.